Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. We have four stories for you this week. The Mavic 3 Enterprise gets Category 2 approval, which is a big deal. A Pac 107 serious injury. We'll talk about the details. Uh, a loft completes lens onboarding and then gets new features. And then lastly, the DJI Neo specs are leaked. Let's get to it. First off, uh, AVSS seems to be just getting started with approvals. Uh, the Mavic 3 Enterprise and the Enterprise Thermal are now Category 2 approved when they're equipped with AVSS Parachute, which is the PRS M3E. That's the, the code name for it. This allows the drone equipped with the uh, parachute to legally operate over people and moving vehicle under Part 107 without having a waiver, which is, again, a big deal. Uh, they got uh, the Matrice 3D approved a couple weeks ago. Uh, it sounds like they even have probably even more in the pipeline. So it's awesome to see that a company is working on categorizing drones after having a dry spell for many, many, many years. Uh, so we'll uh, share more when we have more. Next up, the NTSB has released a preliminary report on an accident that happened in February of this year. A uh, small drone was involved in an accident on February 20th of 2024, and this happened in Orlando, Florida. Uh, the RPIC stated to the investigators that the purpose of the flight was to power wash a hospital and that the RPIC and the aircraft had operated multiple times throughout the day before that. Uh, on the final flight, the remote pilot took off and noted that the aircraft began to lose control directionally about two or three feet above the ground. The RPIC attempted to control the aircraft, but there was absolutely no response. The RPIC then attempted to disarm the aircraft, but again, no response. So then the RPIC realized that the drone would not respond to any of the command and then decided to manually unplug the batteries inside the drone, resulting in severe laceration on his arm, his hands, and his legs. This is according to the NTSB report, and then also partially severing a finger. Uh, the aircraft in question is the Apelix B-1 washing drone, uh, which is a coaxial uh, quadcopter. So it's a quadcopter with two motors, one on top and one at the bottom. And obviously not a whole lot of room to put your hand to take out the battery. Uh, we'll keep you updated when we see more, but this is actually the second accident uh, that we've seen in the NTSB database with very similar um, results and very similar uh, setup where someone tried to reach inside. Uh, the other one was a couple of years ago uh, with the Matrice 300, where they tried to reach inside and, and get the battery out and get really, really bad laceration. So. Third up is Aloft that has completed the FAA's onboarding process, introducing new features. Uh, those new features are primarily around improving further coordination requests. So if you want to fly above a grid number or in an area that is in zero grid, you need to get what's called further coordination. Uh, two new features that will help remote pilots immensely, I believe, uh, for further coordination. The first one is a reduction in the expiration time from 24 hours to three hours before the the operation. So if you submit something uh, 24 hours in advance, typically or less than 24 hours in advance, you would get an automatic message that said, um, can't do that. Now it's down to three hours, which should help. And then the second is enhanced feedback that would allow ATC to send feedback on why the request was denied, uh, which I think is a big deal. A lot of people have been complaining uh, about why their request gets denied. So ATC would be able to say, well, try again 100 feet uh, lower, for example, and then maybe you'll get uh, approval. So hopefully these two improvements save operator and the FA and ATC time and money uh, with scheduling and then requesting your space approval. All right, last up, more DJI Neo leaks. Uh, most of the specs appear to have been leaked on the new drone. Uh, the drone appears to come at 135 grams, which is, I think, the lightest... I don't know if it is. The lightest DJI drone, maybe. Uh, I know the uh, the Spark is pretty light, but I don't remember how much it weights. Uh, with an 18 minute flight time and a max maximum flight distance of four miles using OQSync 4, and then 22 gig of internal storage, which is an interesting number. The Neo camera is rumored to have a 12 megapixel half inch sensor, F2.8, uh, ISO 100 to 6400, and then a maximum uh, resolution of 4K 30, which is kind of incredible for a drone that small. 
Uh, leaks also suggest that the NEO does not have uh, any SD card compatibility and shoots only in JPEG and MPEG-4. Uh, the pricing is rumored to be $329 for the Flymore combo and uh, to be released on August 20th, which is not really far, five days from we're recording and uh, three days from the time that you're watching this video. Uh, obviously, those release dates and rumors are not always correct. I haven't seen actually uh, any kind of event scheduled for DJI, but if you see one, that's probably what it's going to be. So this might be a good, although limited uh, solution for category one operation. And then lastly, uh, even though we're pretty much done here, for our community members, we'll have a special announcement on Monday, so keep your eyes out for that. Uh, if you're not already a member of the community, uh, what you're waiting for, I guess head over to community.pilotinstitute.com to join. Uh, you need to uh, be enrolled in one of our courses, and then uh, you'll find a lot of people talking. We just passed 40,000 members uh, in the community, so there's a lot of discussions going on over there. All right, that's it. You have a great week, and we we will see you on Monday for the live and then tonight as well for the community happy hour. And then lastly, the DJI Neo Sec is Sec? Oh, Specs. That's what Jason wrote. S-E-C-S. -E <laughs> no. Peace.